Well, if you're looking for a blade to subjugate a lot of your other pocket knives, this might be it. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another blade review here at the channel where we're looking at the Wii Knives Subjugator. Definitely on the premium level, at least what I feel like when I see fit and finish materials, um, you know, attention to detail in a pocket knife. This blade definitely puts a lot of other tools to shame. We are going to run in some competitive options throughout the video. I got here, let's see, what do I got? We've got a Viper knife made in Italy. We've got uh, zero tolerance. We're going to talk about steel qualities and stuff. And then uh, another Wii knife as well that we're just going to run in for competitive options as we go through here. Let's just put this right here. Give a little visual pop and accent there. There you go. Look at that. Mm, here, let me style this for us. There we go. Oh, 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 okay. We'll talk about those in a minute. So what, what does the subjugator have? What makes it stand out? Well, one is, is CPM 20 V sorry. I'm just so excited. I'm pumped today. I'm just cranking out some content for us and just really enjoying, enjoying the blades that I got on hand right now. It's good when, when the blades bring you some joy. So the subjugator has a uh, CPM 20, CV steel, an excellent steel, definitely in the family of M390, premium, absolutely. Then we got titanium handle, lots of little details that we're gonna dive into uh, today. Now, this one happens to be like a bronzed color. They have like four or five different color combinations currently. This one really connected with me. I really like just the, the way it looks. All the accents are bronze, and then there's like this, this you know, smoke brawn. It's color with like little hints of gold almost in it, kind of bronze. Uh, and it's just as excellent. And it's already showing a little bit of wear marks. So it's going to give you this kind of Mandalorian wear real quick. And I like it. I like that a lot. Titanium does wear real fast, guys. So if you're thinking this is like going to be a safe queen that you're going to take out and use every once in a while, if this is riding in the pocket with any set of keys, it will mar it up. But I like it because it's going to give it like even a cooler vibe to the design. So um, now there's lots to go through. One of the things that's really cool is let's let's look at the deployment. Now I've heard some people say lately that like a finger flipper is lazy knife designing. I see that. I can get that for sure. And if you were to ask me, do I prefer a finger flipper or do I prefer thumb studs? I would prefer a well-designed thumb stud over a finger flipper. That doesn't mean I don't like flippers, but this has a good one, good uh, mild jimping on that flipper, fully exposed, easy to engage, but it's not huge. You know, I have some finger flippers that are just ginormous. And you're like, ugh, it's like getting in the way of the styling. So that's not the case with this, only adds to the lockup, but then also has ambidextrous, fully functional bronze thumb studs that are not sharp, but not slick either. Milling on those sides right there so that I can easily engage that sucker and it just like flies open. Can I do it left? No. Oh, almost. You lefties easily engaged as well. This is an ambidextrous knife we'll talk about here in just a little moment. So there you go. So that's super nice. Now detent, perfect, freaking perfect on that detent. Buries the tip in so you're not going to accidentally have it come out. Uh, I just got, I spent $300 on a Spyderco recently and the detent sucked so bad that over the course of like two days, the detent came out. Uh, or excuse me, the, the blade was coming out and, and could have nicked me. I had to return it. So it was really depressing. Um, so that is buried in there in a good detent that like, let's see if I can do it. Boom. Sucks it in right there. Boom. So it's not too, too much where it's like, it's not engaging to like here, you know, or whatever. And it makes it very easy to then whoosh, flip open, deploy, runs on ball bearings as you would probably expect. But no rock. A lot of ball bearings have rock. Dudes, this thing is solid. Up, down, side, side, nothing. No play, no nothing. And what's really cool, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is it has a traveling stop pin. So you can see here, right there, check that out. That travels with the knife, with the blade. So it does expose itself right there for just a minute. It's like peekaboo. Boo! Um, and then goes back and you don't see it again. Uh, I would have been nice to have the handle designed in such a way that you didn't see it ever. It's not bad, but it's just something I noticed. So that isn't premium. I don't know. I don't really care, but I mean, it just, you know, you do, you get it. You see it and you're like, hmm, well, but pops in place and then hides itself. So you don't see it, 
which is really cool. And stops that in there. And then with that nice, solid frame lock, goes and hits 50% of the back of the blade. Has an over-travel stop. This stainless steel as well with that pad. So that's just really locking it into place. And then good milling. You know, it's full. It's just a little bit past the handle, so you're not going to get a hot spot when you're gripping it. But it's definitely easily engaged and easily, you know, closed. Okay, I hate it when I get a frame lock. Sharp or buried. Here's a knife. I mean, you can buy four of these knives for the cost of that Wii knife. But this is a very sharp, thin liner lock, or excuse me, frame lock portion right there. Not super comfortable to grab and remove. Um, whereas this is much thicker and just milled. And that's a good thing. So, great deployment, great lockup, very happy with that, perfect centering, super smooth. But not like, this is like, for if you're going to do ball bearings or just do deployment in general, like I don't like them when they're just so like, wee, coasting. There is a little bit of, st it's not stick, stick is not the right word, but you get what I'm saying. So, um, and then full size grip on my hand, nothing super like mind blowing in the ergonomics, you know, everything's milled, no sharp edges, flow through construction. Standoffs are bronze in this case. Very cool. Very good. Again, you won't have that over travel. Doesn't create a hot spot. Fills out my large size hands very nicely. A little bit of jimping right there. Not sharp or aggressive, but gives you a little something to work with. No, that's a resharpening Ricasso. Um, I can kind of get my finger in it at like a 45 and use it if I had to, but I, I don't. You know, it's just easy to use it that way. Uh, 3.48, so basically five inches on the blade length overall, probably three and a quarter with that little sharpening Ricasso. High flat grind or saber grind with that black coating on that blade. It's holding up well to the wear that I've already put this through. Eighth of an inch thick back by the studs into that really nice precise tip. So don't be stabbing and cranking on it, but it's precise enough to do those EDC tasks. You know, you can get a, like a little sliver out of your kid's finger, like pop that out. Um, so great. I mean, nothing to really complain about there. 20 CV steel, CPM, obviously. Um, and the pocket clip. Guys, look. Okay, positives and negatives. Positive. Very cool. Ambi. So that's a good one it's for you lefties. Totally ambidextrous. They got those really cool little bronze screws in there. The freaking camera will show you. There it is. Um, but you can flip, flip it. Recess screws. Come on. That's the way you do it. Every knife company needs to pick up on that. Matches the handle, very cool. The flare is a little obnoxious, gonna be honest. Doesn't need to be that crazy. Doesn't have to be that big. What's this one got? Yeah, see? I mean, it's not as crazy as on that ZT. So, um, not the end of the world, but it definitely protrudes a little bit. I snagged the counter the other day with it, so that wasn't fun. Um, but, you know, didn't bend it in a bad way or anything like that. Chipped my counter a little bit, but just keep that in, in consideration. So. Um, let, before, let me hit price point real fast and then we'll talk just competitive options and the steel. I want to talk particularly about 20 CV for just a moment, just my opinion on steels. So this guy's going to go for like 225 on average. I'll have links, Blade HQ, um, as well as GP knives, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, Amazon eventually, I'm sure. Um, so appreciate it where you can go check those out if this knife or any of the other ones, you know, makes sense for you. And, uh, we knives did hook me up with this so that I could test it out and give you guys my thoughts. Now, my thoughts are on the steel itself. 20 CV is definitely in that family of, um, you know, M390. So it's very good on edge retention, but it's going to be, it's going to take quite a bit to resharpen. And this Wii knife here, the Reaver, is an S30V, very similar. This is actually like 260, I think, um, right now. Very, very cool. Lots of detail in this blade. Uh, but this has S30V, sorry, S35VN steel. And that has the properties of S30V, but is a little bit easier to resharpen. And if you were to ask me between the two types of steel, I think I would take ease of resharpening over edge retention most of the time. Not with every steel, properties, different things, you know, all that. But for particularly pocket knives, you know, if you're like, dude, S35VN or 20CV, I think I'll go with S35VN just because it's a little easier to work with and maintain over the 20CV. It just takes a little bit. For fun, um, wanted to run in this one. This one didn't get a lot of love when I did the video on it, even though I think it's a really excellent blade. This is the Orso 2 from Viper Knives. Uh, this is really interesting, made in Italy with LO-QPM-20-4 steel. It's in the it's German steel in the family of M390. They did a lower Rockwell, like 57 to 59. 
So you get a lot of the properties of M390, but it's a little easier to work with. So again, just going to that idea, titanium, micarta, ball bearings, you know, excellent fit and finish and quality. This is like uh, 175 for this one. So, um, you know, there's definitely competitive stuff to Wii knives out there, which is good to see. And again, just going to the idea of, you know, maybe depending on the type of activity you're doing, the resharpening might be a little bit more important to you. And then uh, this zero tolerance here, just wanted to show it because it has 20 CV steel as well. And I'm not down on 20 CV uh, at all. You know, it's a great steel. And some of you guys, may, and I want to hear your thoughts. Maybe you prefer it over S35 EN. But um, it is, from my experience, a little bit more of a bear to get that fine edge back on it. This guy, you can actually find these if you hunt around the plain version in black or tan for about 250. So USA made titanium G10, that you know, CPM 20 CV steel, much bigger. This is a much heavier duty blade than these. These are much more like EDC. This one's more heavy duty, but uh, excellent milling, you know, good deployment, ball bearings, all the stuff that you'd expect. The, the Tiger Stripe version is going to be more expensive at like 350 So, um, but there's an option as well with that type of steel. But if you were to ask me like, hey, there's a version in 20 CV and there's an S35VN version, I think I would go with the S35VN version on that one. So uh, the Subjugator, definitely an excellent EDC blade, lots of options and will absolutely subjugate and has several of my other pocket knives currently just because it's excellent to use fun to you know deploy bust down people are like whoa let me see it what do you got and uh it's just an excellent tool I, I, i'm digging that really cool color combination that we went with um, but i want to hear from you guys what's your thoughts on this particular blade and let me know other tools that you want to see reviewed here at the channel as well as your thoughts on S35VN versus 20CV particularly. So appreciate you guys. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.